It's complications <laughs> in total aparthoplasty, infections, and more nightmares. And the first talk uh, we're going to have is on the painful hip arthroplasty. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. It's sort of like a Debbie Downer moment. I'm going from a beautiful non cemented knee surgery to a painful total joint. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but hopefully you can bear with me. I have no conflicts relevant to this uh, discussion. And so sometimes it's really easy to tell why a hip hurts. Oftentimes it's not. And so it always seems that these patients show up in your clinic at the worst possible time. You have an overbooked clinic, it's an energy drain on your staff and your resources, and they have a lot of notes from multiple providers, they're frustrated family with a lot of lists, and they want a simple fix or they have preconceived ideas about what's wrong. When this happens, um, just go back to basics. I would argue that just put all this stuff aside and talk to your patient for a little bit. You'll be surprised what you can find out. In fact, I think 50% of the cases you can make a diagnosis based on a history and physical exam. And if you add plain images in, 90% of the time you'll be able to figure this out. I do advance imaging to confirm or to quantify um, diagnosis, but not as a routine basis. And so with, with pain, pain's always a big uh, part of the equation. You have to figure out if the patient had persistent pain from the surgery or there was a pain-free interval. Also, is the pain different than it was before the surgery? This is important to ask because if it's the same pain as there was before, you may be missing well, something. Doing the right? And if you have a patient who has a contralateral hip that's very happy and they're having issues with that one side, it's in our best interest to find a reason. And um, the nature of the pain, whether it's mechanical startup or pain with activity or constant pain is very important. And things that can provoke the symptoms are also important. The location and radiation of the pain are important factors. So this is an example of a patient you could diagnose just from the history. She had hip arthritis, had a total hip replacement. Her hip arthritis pain went away. Since the surgery, she's had constant non-mechanical throbbing pain about the hip. It's hard to call her own baby ugly, but if you do, sometimes you can diagnose infection. And in a case like this, she's neglected, had massive bone loss, requiring more complex uh, two-stage reconstruction. So infection is always something to consider. Um, but when you see them in clinic, get up, have them walk. You can, you'd be surprised how much you can pick up from limb position, gait, like limb discrepancy, walking aids. And oftentimes, you can provoke the symptoms, especially with mechanical problems. Be careful to look for the wound and neuropathic type symptoms. These are all three patients of mine who I saw. And you saw them walking to clinic, and their legs are turned out from a retroverted subsided stem. Classic findings if you look for it. This is a patient who reports that her arthritis pain is better, but she has, and she has no pain at rest, but she has constant pain with activity, worse with walking. It's been there since the surgery, mainly lateral. If you have her walk, you'll see the classic abductor deficient gait using a cane and um, uh, use an MRI to confirm what we thought. She has a deficient abductors, likely from this errant cable that damaged the abductors during the passing, she needed abductor reconstruction. This patient loves her left hip, right hip. Her pain is different than before surgery, activity-related groin pain, worse with stairs and inclines. When you try to resist hip flexion, she has severe pain. Classic iliopsoas impingement from a prominent socket, temporary relieved by injection, fixed by um, revision of the socket, as uh, described by this classic article from Mayo Clinic. And when you have serial images and pre-op images, look at them. It's worth it. Hang them side by side. This is a patient who has thigh pain different from her pre-op surgery, worse with activity, no startup pain. You don't need a bone scan to tell you that she has step, stem tip pain from a prominent stem. And so this was done in a way by her primary care doctor. The patient had same pain as she did before surgery, unrelieved by surgery, constant, dull, non-mechanical, non-specific. Be wary. Get the pre-op x-rays. <laughs> this poor lady never needed a hip replacement. She has some sort of neuropathic issue. We see this quite often. Just get the pre-op x-rays. Uh, hang your picture side by side. This patient had about three to six months of good pain relief, worsening thigh pain. Um, this was the last follow-up with her surgeon. You can see there's already some uh, loosening inside subsidence. Three years later, she comes to me. She's completely subsided. X-rays, diagnosis. Um, be careful of soft tissue tension. This is a patient who was over lengthened by almost a centimeter. She had persistent soft tissue pain, which is different from mechanical pain. Very unhappy. This gentleman here is a surfer. His offset was not restored, and he had constant aching in his hip, constant fatigue, some clicking from impingement, never dislocated, but ended up being revised for soft tissue tension issues. And now the newer um, findings that uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Skalka published on the dislocation rates for, inter inter, um, for dual mobility um, cases. This is a gentleman who had seen three different physicians, clicking, pain with walking. If you actually look at his x-ray, you can see sort of a soft tissue shadow here. There's eccentricity in there. You don't, you don't need advanced imaging to tell you that day. The head is dissociated from the inner ball. And so he was revised. And so in summary, in a five-minute presentation, um, it's actually not uncommon to see patients who have um, 
thigh pain in about 10% of cases, which is transient. So sometimes you gotta wait a year. Uh, sometimes there's incisional trochanteric issues. But for the most part, if you listen to your patient, you can diagnose what's going on 90% of the time without any advanced imaging. And don't forget, serial images and infection are two big things to never forget. Thank you. Excellent.